What is it that binds us to this place like no other? It is not the well or the bell or the stone walls or the crisp October nights or the coming of dogwood blooming. No, our love for this place is based on the fact that it is as it was meant to be, the university of the people. For the Carolina faithful, you will recognize these words penned by the legendary journalist and native son, Charles Corralt. My name is Charles Koontz and I am the not so legendary, but longtime member of Holy Trinity Episcopal Church. And Jeff has asked me to take a few minutes to share with you what this place means to me. In order to do this, I must go back a number of years to how my journey with Holy Trinity actually began. I recall as a youngster, my church affiliation was with Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in the Massey Hill suburb of Fayetteville and later with Christ Episcopal Church in the sleepy little mill town of Hope Mills. As very young teenagers in the mid-1950s, my brother Calvin and I were introduced to a vacation Bible school being conducted jointly by St. John's Episcopal Church in downtown Fayetteville and the newly formed Holy Trinity Episcopal Church just out of town here on Rayford Road. I remember thinking how St. John's must truly be a cathedral and that the people leading our group were some of the nicest people I had ever met. It didn't hurt that one in particular was a beautiful young lady who would later become Mrs. Mary Stewart. I would continue to attend Christ Church in Hope Mills throughout high school and during my college years. And when Connie and I got married in 1967, we were content to remain loyal to both First Church, which was First Baptist in Hope Mills, as well as mine, and alternated Sunday visits with both. But when our son Tommy was born in 1973, things changed. And I give Connie credit for initiating the idea that we needed a church that our new family could call home. We had visited Holy Trinity a few times over the past several years and were very comfortable with Charles Duvall, who would later become Bishop Duvall, along with the staff and the people who made us feel like this could really be our new church home. Shortly thereafter, Connie completed confirmation classes, Tommy was baptized, and I was invited to become an usher, an usher. As I look around today, I can still see some of the same faces that welcomed us then that continue to welcome us each and every Sunday, 43 years later. Through the years, we also welcomed new priests and hundreds of military families to our church community. We have watched young people grow and become responsible adults and have children of their own. We have said goodbye to longtime friends and have made new friends with strangers. Some of you may have noticed that in recent months, Connie and I have made new friends with Greg and Lindsay Hudgens, and today we were honored to stand with them as their daughters Addison and Ridgely and son Grayson were baptized. During earlier years, we had the pleasure of watching our son and many of your sons and daughters become involved not only in the activities of this parish, but with the youth events at Trinity Center on Emerald Isle and Canuga in the western part of the state. Even today, Tommy has served on the medical staff, has been camp director, and currently serves on the advisory board for Canuga. In addition, he and his wife Robin devote a full week of service as a medical team for Trinity Center during one of their summer camps. Along the way, we also said goodbye to a beloved sanctuary that had long since moved past its prime and replaced it one of the most beautiful and inviting places of worship in the greater Fayetteville area. In a recent letter to the congregation, Mike Morketter shared a message from the Stewardship Committee about strong roots grow godly fruits and that we as Christians have a biblical and spiritual obligation to give back to God. He suggested that roots grow strong at Holy Trinity because of our individual and corporate commitment to share our time and talents here. 
Mike closed his letter with an invitation to give joyously and with a glad heart, knowing that your support allows much godly fruit to grow. So maybe I need to ask, what is it that binds us to this place like no other? Is it the beautiful hand-carved doors, or is it the labyrinth? Is it the food pantry, or is it the outreach ministries that make us who we are? Around town, many of us are being asked, what's going on at Holy Trinity? The answer we each choose to give may define what really binds us to this place like no other.